The Rock of Virginia, 96.3 ROV. My name is JD, and we are set to get our laugh on next Thursday, Jefferson Center. <laughs> Ralphie May is on the phone. What's up, dude? Hey, man, I'm awesome. How are you, Brian? I can't complain, man. You uh, you got some crazy stuff going on. So you're on tour right now. What's going on in your life? I am in, uh, I'm in Beaumont, Texas, and I am, uh, I am in the middle of a bad thunderstorm. And uh, a funnel cloud just came through here, and uh, it's like there's a uh, tornado alarm going off and stuff like that. And I can see where the black has kind of like left, the, uh, the, you know, the black clouds have kind of left. So I think we're okay, but man, it's really bad. That is crazy. So, yeah, that's why I was a little late calling in. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to be a dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all good. We're so excited to see you in town, man. You've had such an awesome career. What what really inspired you to get into comedy? Um, you know, I, I know I wanted to be a comic when I was nine. I was a big fan of watching uh, watching uh, uh, Johnny Carson and and uh, and loving on him and and just just being a huge fan of of, of his stand up and, and and what he did at the monologue and then. And then when comedy exploded in the 80s, I was a child of that. And, and you know, Eddie Murphy and, and Sam Kennison and, and Andrew Dice Clay. And, and now Andrew's a friend of mine. Sam was a friend of mine. And, and it's so crazy that uh, that all this has happened to me, you know, and that, you know, I'm, my, uh, my career has taken off the way it has. And, and I have, uh, you know, the friends that I have. And, and you know the four one-hour specials on Comedy Central, and and uh, you know that that things are taken off the way they are. You know it's it's really impressive. You know. It really is, and you know I was just uh, I was thinking about you the other day, and I was thinking when you first started out, and if you go on a date with a girl, was there a lot of pressure to be funny like co- the whole time? Yeah, but it was okay. It was a defense mechanism. It was automatic, <laughs> and so. I found that if I made them laugh, I could get in their pants, and, uh, and so uh, it was extra motivation to, you know, to be funny, you know, it's like waka, 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 I'm, I'm going to be hilarious because I'm, uh, I'm trying to bang this broad, so let's make this happen, you know, That's and I, uh, I, I, uh, uh, I had such a good time with it, you know, I mean, that, that's one of the things that was happening to it, I was in it, um, I got put in advanced classes uh, when I was a kid. I was um, I got put into uh, uh, I got put into uh, uh, I was in high school and college at the same time. I was going to the University of Arkansas and um, I was going to uh, uh, the uh, my high school at the same time because I'd been tagged by uh, uh, the the state as uh, having a high IQ and all this other crap, you know. It doesn't mean anything, to be honest with you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it was uh, it was crazy because I I been, they thought I was retarded when I got tested, and they found out I was actually bright. And so uh, <laughs> and so um, I go into all this, and I uh, uh, I get into, uh, into these classes, and I'm taking this classes. And I, uh, my study group, uh, we we go to celebrate the end of the semester uh, in December. I uh, uh, I won, uh, uh, I got the, an A, and I won this uh, student of, of the semester award, uh, which no one under uh, like twenty had ever won. And wow. it was in organic chemistry, and I had gotten everything right, every test right, I'd done everything right, and I'd really worked my ass off to win it, you know. And, like, I was a kid. I didn't know I was messing up the curve for everybody, but I was. And um, and uh, the only two people who got A's in this guy's class were me and an Indian guy. And not the kind with feathers, but the kind with the dots, you know. And um, um, I went to this, uh, we went to Shaky's Pizza and to celebrate. And we got out there, and we uh, they were having a stand-up comedy contest, and my my study group guys were like, "You should go up there, man! You should do it!" And so I did, and then I got an oral favor from an unattractive girl, <laughs> and 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 I was like, you know, uh, screw college. Wow! You know, I just I just busted my ass. I did this. I did the hardest thing I've ever had to do, <laughs> and and no one's ever done anything nice for me at all. And then boom. I uh, I uh, bust my ass and I uh, I make it all happen and and then I get uh, I, I get you know a, a homie from an unattractive girl 
You know, it's like, uh, okay, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. And it's now, is it one of those things? You you do a lot of observational comedy. Does that make it? Is it easier or harder to always be thinking about you know new material? Is it is it a thing where it's a pressure? I, I saw Chris Rock on Comedy Central recently yeah. was talking about the pressure of constantly coming up with new material, even though a guy like Sting has sung Roxanne four hundred thousand times. Exactly, exactly. You know, but, but the difference between a stand-up comic and and actors is, is, and, and and singers rather is just a huge thing. I mean, we always have to come up with new stuff, and you're only as good as your last joke, you know. And and it's really hard, you know. I mean, just to testament that, my um, uh, I've put out five albums in the last eight years, and and recorded over eight hours of material during that time. Wow. No, no stand up comedy in the last thirty years has done that. Okay. Um, I have had four one hour specials uh, on uh, Comedy Central. Again, no stand up comic has ever done that. That's crazy, man. And and it's like it, these things are, are things that nobody else has ever done. And and I don't know why I got lucky to do that. You know to why I'm the person who gets this, and, and I don't know why I'm able to be able to uh, to do this many jokes and, and make this much magic happen for me. But you know I don't ask a lot of questions either. You know I, I uh, I'm just happy to be where I'm at. You know I've got a beautiful wife. That uh, that gives me a ton of of uh, great material, and I've got two beautiful children that get, that you know write a ton of material for me, uh, you know just telling their stories and stuff that happens with them uh, is is just it's easy you know it's it's so easy just to make it happen that way, and it's just something that uh, I'm just lucky you know I'm just very very lucky I think you know to have the the career that I have and to have the life that I lead is just is a, is a very, very rare thing, you know? Well, it seems like it's a train of thought kind of deal, too, because it's kind of like, you know, you've got these things going on in your life where you're traveling, you've got the wife, you've got the kids, and is that kind of, do you kind of see your comedy as kind of like a funnel where you're you're taking that in and then it's coming back out with your observation and your take on it? Yeah, without a doubt. I don't know if you can hear all that rain coming down right now. I can. I'm in the middle of a monsoon. It's like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Uh, hopefully I don't blow away. Yeah. And if I do, the, this is going to be a thing that the Senate helps me, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it really does, man. You know, it's uh, it's something that for me, the uh, uh, I, I'm kind of like the conduit for a lot of comedy around me. And, and when I get mad about some things, you know, I, uh, you know, whether it's like my last album, um, I, I was upset with, we we still have 50 years after uh, the Civil Rights Act and the Voter Registration Act. We we still have racial problems, and we still have you know the like the Trayvon Martin shooting and and the mentality that allows that to happen. And and we we still allow the what's going on in uh, Arizona where people are getting pulled over for driving Mexican and uh, and and you know we still have all this division. You know it used to be. You know, loving or hating, you know, your president was your president. And now, you know, you, you have you have congressmen and, and senators yelling during the State of the Union address. And, and you know what? You know, the, the, not for nothing, but the president should have grown a pair and said, hey, you know what? You don't like me? That's fine. You respect the office. Because I don't represent me right now. I represent the United States of America. Right. So you shut your mouth, and you know what? Uh, officers, remove that man who has no respect for the office, or these power halls, and these great people of the United States of America. And you know what? He, that's what needed to happen. Somebody needed to, to atone for that, you know? Sure. You call me a liar on your own time. This is for America. And there's, we've lost a sense of civility, you know, and and uh, a sense of of togetherness and who we are as a as a country, you know. It really bothers me. I couldn't agree with you more, man. And I I, I can't wait to uh, to be able to see you live on uh, next Thursday, this coming Thursday at the Jefferson Center. If a person hasn't seen you live before, what can they expect from the evening? Well, you know, there's a lot of people over there that have. You know, I've, I've performed uh, several times just up the street in, in uh, Blacksburg at, uh, at, you know, at Virginia Tech. And, yes, sir. And and coming there after all the tragedy that that y'all have experienced, you know, 
I just wanted to hug everybody there. You know, it, it, it's that, uh, you know, when that happened, we were all hokey. And, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. We've lost, we've lost uh, a measure of, of, of innocence, you know, that day. You know, we, we lost who we were. And, and, you know, we lost lives, but we also lost, you know, uh, it, it, it goes back to this attitude that, you know, you know, if you get mad, you just go kill somebody. Or you, you get upset with something, you know, instead of having recourse, you know, you can hurt somebody. And it's just, it's wrong. Sure. And when I get mad about that, you know, I use comedy to diffuse it. And and I think that's what the great thing about my stand-up is, is that I bring levity into situations that need to be, that need to have it. You know, that, that people need to learn to love a little more and laugh a little harder Hug a little, hug a little more, you know, and uh, get along a little better. And if they did that, then we'd all be better as a country. And and realize that the basic theme of my stand-up is that we're all fingers upon the same hand. We may not look alike, but we're all needed. And and you know, I'm also doing all new material. You know, nobody's done that before ever. You know, I just released a new album in May, and 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 I I love all that stuff. But I uh I I wanted to bring new material so i've got all new jokes um i've got uh another two hours of brand new material that i'm bringing to roanoke and and uh you know y'all come out and i'll make you laugh hard and i don't do even though i'm contract to do just an hour i do two hours because wow. i want my audience to get their full value for the entertainment dollar you know um a lot of comedians they only do an hour and and it's hour that that you've seen on television. Sure. Uh, but not me. I want uh, I want them to do it because my audience are hardworking people, and it takes most of them two hours to earn the money to pay for the ticket. And if it takes you two hours to earn the money, then for the, to buy the ticket, then should not give two hours. Am I time to? Man, that's awesome. That's a really great way of putting that, man. I can't tell you how much I respect that. That's awesome. Well, you know, it, it, thank you, brother, for saying that. You know, I, sometimes I, I don't feel like I'm deserving of people's kindness and and uh, and their compliments, and I, I really appreciate that you said that because, you know, that that's what I, the message. I want to not only uh, make people laugh hard, but I want to raise their expectations. I want them to demand more of other entertainers and and get more value for their dollar and and realize that you know that we should all just be laughing and loving and. Uh, and getting along and and realizing that we can do more together than we ever could apart. Well, I definitely think that comedy is one of those things that can bring us together like that. And, Ralphie, we can't thank you enough for your time today. We'll see you this coming Thursday in Roanoke, my friend. Thank you, brother. And and all you uh, guys in, in Blacksburg, y'all come on down, okay, before school gets ramped up real hard. All right, y'all come on down. I'll make you laugh hard, all right? And, and Roanoke. You guys, oh, I love that little town. I love it. It's one of my favorite places in uh, in Appalachia. I love it. And uh, I love it. It's, it's a little hamlet. And uh, I love you guys. So don't y'all be, uh, be remiss. And don't y'all uh, slip up on me and, and miss me, all right? <laughs> Come get me. It's my only going to be, it's the only time I'm going to play over there. It's my first time I've played Roanoke in years. And, uh, and I want you guys to... I told them that uh, when I booked the gig, uh, my promoters were like, I don't think that's, that's where we should play. And I'm like, I think that they'll come. And so y'all proved me right. That's awesome, man. We'll see you soon, my friend. All right, buddy. Bye, pal. Thank you, man. See ya.